Derek Drozda. I uh, work for the U.S. Department of Education as a data science fellow. Um, focused uh, on supporting uh, efforts to add data literacy and data science uh, to K-12 instruction. Um, I'm really excited to be, uh, in that, which includes uh, uh, work in social studies. So I'm really excited to be uh, serving as moderator. I'm facilitating Q&A for, for the event today. Um, and we have a great pres presentation uh, by Carla, Sarah, and Joshua. Um, so I'll uh, hand it over to you all now to, uh, to introduce uh, yourselves um, and kick off the presentation. Thank you so much. Um, Carla, I'm gonna let you pull up the slides. Okay. Looks gorgeous. Oh dear. Sorry. Um, I think present. Sense. Yes, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, that looks good to me. Uh, I'm Sarah Ditkoff, I'm the Communications Director at Fable Vision Studios. It's great to be with you all today. Um, and a thanks to my co-panelists, uh, Carla Thompson from Maryland Public Television and Josh Pleasant from Benjamin Tasker Middle School. Um, we're here to talk to you today about Civics and American Musical, which is a game that we created through the Library of Congress's Teaching with Primary Sources program. Uh, I'm communications director at Fable Vision. Uh, we're an educational media production studio based in Boston. Uh, we create games, interactives, museum kiosks, animation, video books, um, and learners, uh, for learners of all ages. Uh, Carla, you can go to the next slide, please. Sure. Uh, our work spans across content and curriculum, everything from a K to three statewide math and literacy game-based assessment to healthy relationships, the history of Chinese porcelain, clinical trials and vaccinations, uh, mental health awareness, Native American history and culture and more. Um, the idea for civics came about when we saw an RFP from the Library of Congress's Teaching with Primary Sources program focusing on civics, primary sources, historical events, and acts related to Congress. And of course, as one does, the natural reaction for Fable Vision was to say, let's have kids make a musical. Uh, Carly, you can go to the next slide, please. We were really inspired by the PBS documentary um, that documents the process Lin-Manuel Miranda went through when he was creating Hamilton, working with primary sources and using history in a practical way um, to have huge reach an impact, you know, Hamilton really got kids that weren't interested in history, fascinated with history. And so to adapt that same process to civics, we needed to find topics that middle school kids would find interesting, that, that would be new to them, that would show men and women of different backgrounds and ethnicities, that we could find a variety of primary sources and resources for. Um, we also knew we wanted to use the observe, reflect and question method and of course, something that we knew that we could make a musical out of, including writing original songs. Um, you know, we understand how Lin-Manuel Miranda and his team used primary sources to create Hamilton. And we listened to that soundtrack probably, I don't know, maybe close to a million times for inspiration. Uh, we conducted focus group sessions with kids um, around the topics we decided upon, uh, making sure that they were using that observe, reflect, and question process. We tested look and feel, character designs, and then obviously learning goals as well. Um, we came up with an idea to use different theater departments, you know, costumes, scenery and props, script and lyrics, uh, writing, um, as well as areas to make connections between the past and the present, and then also some self-reflection uh, for students so that they can do some reflection upon their role as being a civically minded and civically acting uh, citizen. Uh, next slide, please, Carla. So here's a fun little video uh, that we created. So students start the process by selecting a topic. Uh, there are four pre-populated in the game, the Chinese Exclusion Act, school desegregation, national parks, and the FDA. Um, they start by finding out more about it and watching a quick animated video that gives them a high level overview of the topic they've selected. They learn how to analyze primary sources using observe, reflect, and question. Um, they can use the magnifying glass to get a closer look at the primary sources that are embedded within the game. Um, we decided to go with text only just for ease of legibility and also comprehension. Um, and these different game elements let students earn points as they go through the game, as they're playing through. Um, students make sure writers that they work with in the game are, um, you know, accurate and they can agree and disagree with their statements using the primary sources to back them up. 
and then they write the signature song that's then performed at the end of the musical by picking the lyrics and the music. Um, they go through the rest of the departments, uh, costumes, props, um, choosing items based on the primary sources that they're given within the game, and then they get points for historical accuracy. There are a few different activities within the game. There's a drama activity where there's discussion around civics and politics and policy. Um, and then there's also a backstage interview where they work with different writers um, from the different departments, which includes a free writing exercise. So everything that you see here, you know, throughout the selection process as they're going through and making their musical, when you're done, students get to see everything that they've chosen in the game on the stage in a final big production. Um, and then they receive a review at the end that's based on the points and performance that they've um, completed within the game. So hugely personalized, historically accurate, and they also get to take on the role as a theater producer and they go through a very similar process that researchers go through when they're analyzing these sources. Um, and we're excited that teachers are using it and that kids are liking it. Um, and I'm gonna hand it over to Carla uh, from MPT to talk about how educators are using those resources. Hi, my name is Carla Thompson and I'm the Director of Learning Design with Maryland Public Television. And we are always excited to be in collaboration with Fable Vision. And particularly around this project, we work to develop not only professional development resources and um, classroom extension activities for teachers to be able to use, utilize within the classroom, but we also support outreach to, to share the word and to, to help everyone know uh, about this phenomenal tool. And throughout the development process, we also supported um, Fable Vision by introducing different concepts to teachers to get feedback to support development, to, to get input about the, the functionality of the game, the content of the game. And as the, the final game was developed and produced, we went on to produce the, a variety of educational or ed educator resources. So some of those resources include a teacher guide to support classroom implementation, to help teachers walk through, understand, each component, the mini games, the goals, the objectives, so that they are prepared to actually use, utilize and implement the game in the classrooms. For each of the four topics that Sarah mentioned, we also created a topic-based learning extension. So using a short video clip that's a part of, the, uh, of each module, we, we introduced that, reintroduce that to activate prior knowledge, to engage students and then combine that with standards aligned activities as well as discussion questions to support teachers efforts to extend the learning from each module and, and go a little bit deeper with, their, with that learning. We also uh, provided and developed 20 inter interdisciplinary civic starters activities. These are also extensions, but they cross a, several different subject areas. So we're supporting civics learning across the curriculum through arts integration activities, through um, some science, there are a few math, and of course through ELA. So those 20 starters are, a lot of them are hands, more hands-on, not necessarily needing uh, a digital component in order to make the activity work. So there's that variety of online and offline usage. And then we developed a, a self-paced PD module for, for educators. And Civics Backstage, setting the scene with primary sources, simply guides and walks an educator sort of through his or her own review of what is inquiry learning, how does it relate to um, civics education. It introduces and incorporates tools that utilize the Library of Congress's pedagogy around observe, reflect, question, and further investigation, and makes classroom connections between um, those components and the civics game itself. So all of that is built into the, the module and all of those resources um, are accessible at different levels through the, the game website. Earlier this spring, we also conducted um, 
Vision partnered with an educational media researcher, researcher to do evaluation, a feasibility study around the classroom usage and um, the civics game. And basically how this was set up is that um, several teachers across uh, the state of Maryland were in, involved in the research study and each of them had a different uh, classroom setting style. So many of them were uh, classroom, I mean, hybrid classroom settings and our student sample was up to uh, 160 students. And our educators worked across a variety of subject areas as indicated. And so MPT supported their effort to um, not only utilize the game, but to be introduced to the, to the material through an orientation session. So we offered pre-work through the, the PD module and actually playing, you know, encouraging the teachers to play the game um, before they came to the orient session, orientation session. And then we really walked through uh, the, the individual needs, um, the individual needs that they uh, wanted to address uh, through the research study, but based on the needs of their students and how their students are learning. And so the implementation was completed across three sessions, including pre and post tests. And one of the features of the game that uh, teachers were able to utilize is a teacher as da a dashboard. And this teacher dashboard allows the teachers to load their, their classroom rosters in and actually track progress across the many games within the entire civics learning game itself to see um, what student, how students are progressing through each of those uh, different mini games. So one of the teachers who we were lucky enough to partner with, Joshua Pleasant from PG County, Maryland, is here today and he's going to share his take and his students' take <laughs> on, on the research study and what that experience was like from his point of view as well as theirs. Joshua? Thank you, Carla. So my first introduction to civics came about a year ago at a summer institute with Maryland Humanities. We were kind of shown this concept that was being developed for this really, really cool educational game that was going to be um, used to help kind of introduce students to primary sources in a different light. So when I was approached about possibly piloting it with my kids, obviously I jumped on the opportunity to do so. So when we brought civics to the classroom, we first started kind of with a build-up session. So we talked about the different ways educational games can be used to help teach content. Students made a list of games they're already playing, like Minecraft and things like Cool Math, to help kind of reinforce education through the gaming um, play. And then we kind of thought about what was going to come with civics. So what were we going to be the takeaways from civics and how music can be used to teach history? So for the warm up for the day, we listened to the actual opening of Hamilton and we took notes on the different pieces of history that were taught through that song and the things they learned about Alexander Hamilton by just listening to that song. And a lot of the kids really started to get excited about civics just because of Hamilton, because it's something that's really popular currently. It's something a lot of them have seen. They knew the songs too. So the idea of kind of bringing that into the classroom was really exciting for them. And they were all singing along and having fun thinking about what was to come. And then we started to kind of brainstorm the good and the bad associated with doing that, because the reality is, is that there are some blown up theater productions and television productions. So we wanted to make sure the kids were aware of how to kind of separate the truth versus the kind of add on stuff that's added on to kind of make things a little bit more entertaining for the viewer. And the classes that were participating in the study were seventh grade classes. Um, three of the classes were tag classes, talented and gifted, and one was honors. There was about 127 students, 92 identified as talented and gifted, 35 honor students, 49 males, 78 females, and the dominant demographic was African-American of the group that was sampled. So we did gameplay in two days. So the first day we did it together where we was projected over the Zoom and projected on a smart TV because in Prince George's County, we are teaching in the hybrid format. So I have half my kids in a classroom and half at home. So we wanted to make sure both were able to experience the game. So we projected it through the Zoom for the kids that were playing at home and on the smart TV for the kids that were playing in the classroom. And we kind of just worked our way through one of the samples. So I knew that we were gonna be doing the exclusion delusion 
for our gameplay for the kids. So we actually picked the one on the preserve or conserve. And we kind of went through the stages of picking the answers and how you can kind of use the gameplay and the different features that are built in to help the kids really start to work with those primary source tools that are in the gameplay of civics. Then on the second day, the students actually got to play the game and they played Exclusion Delusion and they took notes as they were playing. So we kind of knew going in that we weren't just playing this to learn something. We were actually playing this to critique it and find out things that went really, really well, things we might want to add, things that might be taken away. And they kind of did that as they were playing the game. And what I found is that the kids really, really, really bought into it to the point that I had kids asking, could you play over the weekend? Or can I play another one after I'm done to Chinese Exclusion Act? Um, exclusion delusion production. So this is something that they immediately brought in. So I think of my 127 kids, maybe two actually weren't really interested in playing anymore. The rest of them immediately jumped into the next one they are finished and one they are working on because of how engaging they felt when they were playing that, um, that section of the game. After completing the game, we did a logout ticket or an exit ticket as most people would probably call it, but we called a logout ticket in a virtual setting in which they gave their first impressions of the game. And the majority of them, and we got a couple on the next slide, but the majority of them were very positive about their experience. And they liked the way that it really made primary sources come to life. And it kind of took it off of a piece of paper and put it into a format that was a little more engaging for them and more interesting for them to learn through. The good thing about civics too is that there are a lot of built-in extension activities for when you're done playing the game. So it's not just ending when you produce your Broadway production. There's actually several already pre-made lessons for teachers to kind of ex expand and extend that discussion about the topic you were on. We at the time were learning about um, Chinese history. So we wanted to kind of make a connection to what it was like in America and how Chinese history is connected to America. So after we did the Chinese Exclusion Act, we selected an extension on Anime Wong. And the kids really, really, really were able to connect what they learned through civics to this person and what this person went through as a result of the Chinese Exclusion Act. So even a couple of days later as a teacher, I'm starting to see them use that prior knowledge they had learned they're playing civics and be able to apply it to a different person, a different concept as they were um, working through that extension lesson that Fable Vision had built into the game for teachers after they're done playing civics. About a week after we went through our um, playing of the game, we actually were able to have Fable Vision and Maryland Public Television come out to our school and actually do a Q&A seminar session with the kids on their takeaways from civics and things that they liked and things that they would change the students were able to kind of facilitate that discussion and they really provided some good feedback. And I know a couple of people were asking in the chat about other topics and I do believe, and Sarah might be able to add to this, that there are researching right now to possibly adding additional topics to the gameplay beyond just the four that are in um, civics currently. And um, just to kind of wrap up and kind of tie into the students, these are some of the quotes that I were able to gather from the students during their seminar and through the logout tickets. So one student said, I could play this over the weekend again on my own. And they really wanted to kind of continue playing this beyond just the classroom, which always gets you as excited as an educator when you see the kids taking something and continuing that learning on their own time. I like the way you were able to choose your topic and you could use for play and choose what lyrics and what music you can use. Overall, I like the way you can build the play. So it's not just you have to do it this way. The kids are actually able to choose the style of music they want to use for their production. The person that's using the voice for the production when it's being sung to them. So it really is interactive and lets the kids really dive into creating that musical beyond just providing the content that's needed to produce the musical. I liked how the game was easy to control. It gave great facts and images and it had a good way of portraying the facts such as talking to the people and helping them with their task. And I like the way the game was presented, how the game presented primary sources and how you had to pick in between the correct ones and the ones that weren't relevant to the story. So for the kids, it was really cool because the way that Civics presents primary sources is actually the way that you would look at primary sources on the Library of Congress's website or the National Archives website if you go there. So they were able to kind of take away some of those tools they learned playing Civics and apply it to the actual place where these sources are coming from, which helps me as a teacher now because I can use those sources now as different tools to add on to what the students are learning about in the classroom.
So that's our overview of, of civics and we're happy to answer any questions. I know I saw some come in through the chat that we can talk about or um, we also have some more details on our results of the research study that we can cover as well. Awesome. I can I can start off by reading maybe some of the questions in the chat. I think um, some of you Perfect. already cover them a little bit. Um, but I think, um, let's see, Louisa asked what grade level this is recommended for this program. Um, Sarah, you mentioned, you know, middle school. Um, have you all thought more specifically or, or, or more expansively about, you know, targeting different grade levels and that and, and such? Yeah, it is primarily for middle school. Um, I know our research focused on seventh grade classrooms. Carla, do you have any other thoughts on targeting further within that demographic? Uh, no, I mean, as much as we can expand um, within that middle school range to accommodate students based on how they learn, you know, there's um, the opportunity to uh, level uh, offer activities within the extensions that help to level information and offer even a gradual a release support for students who are playing the game and engaging with the content. But I mean, it's going to stay targeted within that middle school range and just allow for allow for ways to accommodate students who are functioning either at a lower a lower level or something to challenge. Um, the students who are functioning higher, like the sample of students that Joshua uh, brought brought to the project through his classroom. Awesome. Great, and I think there's another question from Lucretia, um, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, are, are students working in groups to play this game and, and then are more topics in development? I think we touched a little bit on the, on the topic development and expanding others. Um, but you know, be curious to learn about any integrations or kind of overlap you all see also with like social emotional learning um, and building those skills in the classroom. Yeah, we, we are definitely thinking about more topics and have started some early planning to expand development of civics with more topics. So um, we, we would love to see the game expanded with more areas. Um, so we, we are putting plans in place to expand the game. Um, for group play, I think I think the game kind of naturally lends itself to that. I know because so much of the game can be personalized, and Josh, I think we were talking about um, what you saw that you know kids wanted to see what their classmates had created. We had a lot of experiences within the research that even parents were playing with their kids to go through the process with them together. Um, so it, it can be played single player, but I, I think it kind of naturally lends itself to, to that sort of dynamic. Sorry, Josh, yeah, go ahead. It, yeah, you know, I, I can say for sure that for, for my kids that were in the classroom with me, I, I think it, it became like kind of like a production almost to hear somebody's Broadway production when it finished. So we all got quiet and we listened to the lyrics. So it wasn't that they sat down together in a group and created it but it was that moment after they were finished of kind of coming together and just kind of seeing how the person performed and seeing how their musical might have differed a little bit from somebody else's based on the style of the song they picked or the voice they had um, singing the lyrics. Yeah, that, that, that part of the game, you know, really adds that unique level of, of uh, individualization because you have the unique self-expression of the student playing the game, being able to appreciate and learn from what another student has done and developed and expand their opportunity to, to view it through a different perspective. Um, it, I, I really appreciate that feature of the game. And, and to that point of um, group interaction, I think the, the, ex, the extension activities, especially the civic starters, um, allow for that as well and allow for a teacher to to you know, modify the activity to engage uh, pair, you know, small groups or a larger group, um, and you know, across ability levels as well. So that's part of the, the the goal of those civic starters is to to allow for that that individualization. Maybe picking on that last thread, um, it's a good segue to a question that Kristen asked about uh, using it with struggling students. 
um, in the classroom. So uh, Joshua, I know you you noted that you're, you know, the, the group of kids that you're working with is pretty diverse and there's, there's, there's a few uh, maybe special needs kids, there's students. Um, so you're interested um, in how you all see this fitting um, with you know, different types of students as they grow. Yeah, I, I can say that um, e even though like the majority of my population is identified as, as talented and gifted, there are twice exceptional learners that are built into that that have ADHD or that have other learning disabilities. And, and for those kids, they really bought into the gameplay. And, and it was like presenting history through something that was more fun than, than looking at a piece of paper. I believe somebody mentioned in the chat, the idea of like having it come as connected to a DBQ. And, and that's what a lot of the kids are familiar with with social studies is that document-based document question strategy. And what civics does is it kind of takes that concept of looking at a primary source and analyzing it and going through the steps of thinking like an historian. And it makes it more engaging and more fun for students. So you're not just sitting there staring at a piece of paper. Now you're having people talk to you through a game or you're having people sing the content to you opposed to just reading it through the paper. So it really does blend well for those kids that, that may struggle to kind of just sit still or struggle just to kind of stare at a piece of paper and try to find that content through reading a document. And because of the interaction that they engage in during the game, you know, um, they have the guide through through Melody, the, the production assistant. So they, they have this um, in-game support who can introduce what they need to do, remind them what's going on, <laughs> you know, and offer that kind of a guide. And, and you know, even though they're not while they're not able to save their progress, they can always go back. And that opportunity to repeat and, and redo um, to reinforce learning is, is a built-in support as well. Great, awesome. Uh, and then picking on another question from the chat, I think Stacy had asked if there's already completed examples that we can see, and then also questions around cost. Um, Sarah, I think you already linked some some resources, but I don't know if you want to expand there. Yeah, happy to. Yeah, if you um, if you head to Fable Vision Games, that's where Civics is hosted, um, and there's a trailer on that page, and there's a little musical clip. So you know, there's a great little piece of gameplay that was part of the video that um, that we shared within the presentation, and there's a little musical clip so that you can see a, a completed musical performance within that. Um, and Civics is free. It will always be free. Um, and all you have to do is create an account and you'll get access to the game as well as the resources that, that Carla and Maryland Public Television created. But ev everything, is, everything is free. Now, I can say, Sarah, that um, creating accounts for your students and signing up is very, very simple. It's not complicated at all. They have a personalized login with a personalized password. It's really easy for a teacher. I mean, I had 127 kids that were walking into this game and, and it won very smoothly with no hiccups and the kids were able to log on easy and play easy. And Joshua, what would you, in your experience with the dashboard, how did you find that, where did you find that valuable and supportive during your uh, implementation? It be, being a hybrid teacher and not having the majority of my kids in front of me, it was beneficial to me because I, I could see how they were doing with the game. So I could go on and I can see that they spent 15 minutes playing the game or they spent 30 minutes playing the game. I can see they log back in on the different days. So not having them in front of me and being able to kind of track their progress through looking at the dashboard, it was really, really helpful for me as a hybrid teacher currently to do that. Obviously, if the kids are in a classroom, it's kind of easy just to kind of walk around the room and, and talk to the kids and kind of watch them playing. But for the virtual setting, it blended very well to have that dashboard tool to kind of be able to get some data from their, their piloting of the game and also just how they did and how long they played the game. That's great to hear. Great. So it looks like we have one more question on uh, from Lucretia again. Uh, how long does it take to get through uh, one topic in the game? It, it took my kids, I would say on average, maybe 20, 25 minutes for, for most kids that, that kind of just were able to click through. Because I mean, if you know the answers and you get it quickly, it does move a little quicker, but there are those kind of built-in pieces of, the, of them singing and uh, of kind of acting out things that kind of slow down a little bit. But I think for the most part, for my kids, I think they, they took their time and I would say about 20, 25 minutes of, of gameplay was probably what they did. 
Awesome. Okay. Well, um, I think we're we're nearing the end. If there's any final questions, feel free to drop uh, in the chat. Um, I believe you all already shared your contact information. Um, if not, also it'd be great to share with the with the attendees here. Um, any other uh, parting thoughts um, before we wrap up from from any of you? Just thanks for your time. Happy Saturday. Thanks for taking time out out of your Saturday. If folks have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, I'll drop my email in the chat, Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, at fablevision.com. And thanks. And thanks to Carla and Josh. Oh, thank you. Thank you all for being here wow. today. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much. Yeah, thanks for taking the time and, and, and sharing your work with us. Have thank a great you. rest of your Saturday. Thank me you. Too.